Point Williamsburg Public Affairs presentation. This is Neighborhoods Today. My guest today is a Greenpoint guy who wanted to give kids an alternative to hanging out on the streets after school. Well, after a lot of hard work and determination, an idea became reality with the creation of the St. Stan's Athletic League. Frank Carbone is the group's director, and he's here to talk with me about the league and what they've been doing. Nice to see you, Frank. Hi, hi, Rita. How are you doing? Good. Thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking a little time out of your schedule. No problem. My pleasure. You know, it's hard to believe that seven years ago, the league was just really nothing more than an idea, and I'm always wanting to know what it really was that prompted you to take an idea and, you know, make it a reality, turn it into something concrete. What was it that really prompted you? Uh, just having uh, graduated from college at the time uh, and starting a, my first full-time job, uh, a bunch of uh, friends of mine and myself, we always had had the idea to say, hey, let's. Uh, Let's think about starting something and have a little fun. Gave us an opportunity to play some basketball ourselves. So we said, uh, let's try and put it together and coordinate it and, and get some of the children in the neighborhood involved as well. So we uh, uh, actually, there were some uh, indications from the pastor of the parish at that time that they wanted to start some type of athletic program. So we just kind of rang his bell and said, we're here. Let's get something together. And now, it worked out. And this was the pastor of... Of St. Stan's, St. Right. Uh, Stan's Las Casca uh, on Driggs Avenue and Humboldt Street. And uh, that's where I graduated from. And the core group of mm -hmm. uh, uh, my friends who are now uh, big volunteers in the uh, group, that's how we got our start. Well, you know, the other thing is that it oftentimes it takes more than one person to take that idea and and make it a reality. So I'm kind of curious about the core group of people or supporters sure. you had, mm -hmm. your... Um, I guess your main your main crew, your right hand, your right, right hand people to you know that that you really look toward sure well what it what it basically was is uh, uh we were all friends from the neighborhood, grew up together, spent a lot of time with each other, so this was just an offshoot of our it was almost an extension of us being together, mm -hmm. and here we took it to another level, and if we had looked seven years ago and said that we would have become what we are today, I wouldn't have even imagined that beyond our wildest dreams, but it was just a matter of a snowball type of effect where once we did get going and, and, and an incredible amount of children were interested, we say, hey, this is a lot of fun and let's just keep growing and see where we'll go. Well, well the league is technically an athletic league, the same sure. stands athletic league, mm -hmm. but is, is your mission strictly an athletic mission or is there something else that you're trying to do? Well, as, as you mentioned before, the whole goal of it is to really provide the children of the community, specifically from St. Stan's, with an opportunity to express themselves in a number of different planes, uh, primarily athletically because obviously we, our main facility is located in the gym. Uh, but an extension of that, we'd like to take it socially as well, and also to a certain extent to broaden their horizons and and let them see what's out there, that there is there is life beyond uh, just hanging out on the streets and, and uh, just uh, palling around. You can take that and do something really productive and learn at the same time, and if it takes it to another level to actually give back and teach yourself. So it's really, a, it's turned into a real nice uh, mm -hmm. opportunity, not only for the children, but for us to give them something. Right. Uh, so it's really a nice, unique experience or a nice, unique setting. What about some of the programs? Let's talk a little bit about what you guys have to offer. Well, our most popular program is, uh, as I mentioned before, basketball. Uh, we started out with just an intramural league uh, but that grew and grew in numbers to the point now where we attract almost 200 children, uh, both boys and girls. That's, that's very good. I'm, I'm glad you said that You'll because like that was my next question. It's uh, not uh, just boys, no, right? No, 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 no. In fact, uh, our girls program is 
uh, I would have to say one of the strongest ones, not only in Greenpoint, but also in all of Brooklyn and Queens as well. So we're very happy about that. We have a very talented group so of So we're talking about competition, too. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Well, as I mentioned, we had started out with an intramural league and said, hey, let's kind of have some fun and teach and learn and keep it in-house. Uh, but as the interest grew, uh, we said, well, hey, we're getting pretty good. Let's try and see how we match up against other schools. And it started out just against other schools in Greenpoint, uh, but now we've played schools not only in Queens and other parts of Brooklyn, but mm -hmm. even as far as traveling to other states to play different teams. And we've done fairly well and we've held our own. So it's really encouraging and it's an opportunity for the children to say here. This is what exists outside of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. so, so what else? I mean, I know, I know you guys have more than just the basketball. Sure. Well, the basketball is our primary uh, focus because of the nature of our facility and our volunteer corps. Uh, but some other nice programs that we have for the children as well uh, include bowling, uh, volleyball. Mm -hmm. um, at one time, we did have cheerleading. We're hoping to get that rolling again as keeping the girls involved uh, and we have baseball softball uh, taekwondo so it's quite a quite a nice variety for those who may not be interested just in basketball we'd like to try and offer something uh, uh, a little bit different for them to get involved in what are the age groups of the kids uh, we go as young as eight years old uh, maybe a seven-year-old here and there and we go on up into 18 19 20 years old even once in a while us uh, Older uh, folk, the volunteers get a chance to strut their stuff once in a while and oh, have really? the kids. That, uh, that must be a sight for sore eyes, huh? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sore, uh, sore eyes with sore legs and sore arms afterwards, too. So uh, we're not as resilient as we used to be. But uh, it, it's a nice match for the children sometimes to see us compete and play. Uh, their coaches playing. It's a nice type of uh, a comparison for them, if you will, to say, oh, this is what either I want to be or I don't want to be. So or, it's, uh, or he's my coach. <laughs> he was my coach. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, exactly, true, true. So it's a nice, it, it creates a nice type of family atmosphere which we try to, uh, we try to encourage. So then there really is a lot of participation. It's not, it, it really isn't just the kids, but I mean it's the people that you have working true. with, your crew, your staff, your I coaches. think the key is, is since we require, since we have so many different teams and programs and events going on, it's so important, uh, since we're all volunteers, uh, to have fun while we're doing it. And if you're having fun, you'll spend more time, you'll work a little bit harder, you'll pay that little extra attention to detail. And I think if you're having fun at what you're doing, it just it expresses itself and conveys itself to everybody else. And I think that's what makes it work. And by us kind of participating as well, mm -hmm. it creates and keeps it fun and entertaining and uh, not so serious all the time, which is good. Have you found that with a lot of the kids that are involved with the leagues mm -hmm. and in some of the various programs, that learning how to deal with other kids, learning how to deal with other adults, learning how to work together, that that has translated into something that maybe has to do with school and their school work and just... Sure. I, I guess in a lot of ways, in a, in a simplistic type of way, uh, sports does convey life. Or, or actual life experiences. Uh, for example, just being a part of a basketball team requires a lot. Uh, you just can't go out there and expect to perform at your peak level unless obviously they practice, which teaches them some discipline and say, hey, we have to work to get to a certain level where we can achieve and accomplish and compete. And then also it teaches other things such as responsibility. If you have a, an eight o'clock practice, you have to make sure that you're there 15 minutes ahead of time and be dressed and have your, your uniform or whatever it may be. You have to have yourself ready and available. And it also teaches you how to interact with other people because uh, whenever you're competing, things can get a little intense. And you have to be able to handle all types of situations, whether it be winning or losing or, or getting a little bit too aggressive or being a little bit too passive. It just is an extension of life itself. So if we can offer them that opportunity at a young age, whether it be 8 or whether it be 13 or 14, that itself can extend and hopefully they can take those lessons and apply them to their real life mm -hmm. situations as well. So then teaching the kids a little bit about commitment and responsibility sure. and responsibility to commitment and the people around them. Right. It's an important part of what you guys are trying to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, sounds good. Now I'm wondering if you guys also have any kind of special events that take the kids 
out of the gym and out of the neighborhood? Well, um, what we like to do, and as we mentioned before, we try to incorporate a nice little social element as well as the academic element. So in addition to uh, playing our games on the uh, athletic front, what we do also is we provide to have at least two or three opportunities where the children can get together for a dance whether it be a Christmas dance or a Valentine's Day dance. Uh, one nice uh, feature that we do have is we take each year, and this has grown every year as well, about 40 to 50 children, and we go around the neighborhood at Christmas time and we sing Christmas carols, uh, uh, either at the various residences or some volunteers' houses that go by. I think I've probably been home when you guys have done that. Actually, we did it's, pop in. It's, it's something that's yes. becoming very popular. Yes, yes, it is, it is. Uh, and actually, we, we have to, we take on a request basis for that and we just fill up we have 25 30 houses each year uh, uh, request us to come by so my singing voice is uh, not that uh, good but fortunately so the so kids can kind of back me up a little bit and uh, and carry me through uh, but uh, in addition to that as well a lot of things that we try and do uh, is travel to different places so a nice uh, element that we try and incorporate each year is we take one group of girls and one group of boys to a basketball camp mm -hmm. each uh, each summer where we get to take them away for a week to a college campus, St. Bonaventure University, and they get to spend a week and actually live on campus, eat uh, campus food, which, you know, they have some comments on, uh, sleep in a dormitory. They, they can wait on that they one. <laughs> Uh, but uh, whether it's eating uh, the food there or actually sleeping in the dormitories and seeing a college gym and a college campus, here we're providing them with an opportunity to, to say, hey, I may be in the seventh or eighth grade or in high school, but this is what is out there. And this is what, if I work hard, mm, sure. I may end up uh, achieving. Uh, in, you know, down the road. So that's what we like to do. We like to just incorporate different elements and uh, and try to provide them with different opportunities. Okay, hold that thought because we sure. need to take a brief, a commercial break right here. We're going to break for a public service announcement. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I'm getting vaccinated because we want this pandemic to end as soon as possible. So we urge you to get vaccinated when it's available to you. So roll up your sleeve and do your part. This is our shot. Now it's up to you. We're back with Frank Carbone. He's the director of the St. Stan's Athletic League, and we're talking about the league and what you guys have been doing, what you've been up to. No doubt you couldn't do any of this stuff without a staff, without sure. coaches. Who's your staff? Who are your coaches? Where'd you find them? Where'd you get them? Sure. Okay, again, uh, starting out with uh, 10 or 12 close friends uh, seven years ago, now we've blossomed into a volunteer crew of about 60 to 65 uh, people in total. Uh, and the nice part about that is, yes, some of my friends are still uh, very actively involved and they're big helps, but we also have a number of the parents involved of the children. Uh, we have probably about 15 to 20 uh, core parents who are very, very helpful. Uh, the real encouraging aspect, and I think what really makes this work, is that we have about 30 to 35 high school and college age uh, children and young adults, if you will, mm -hmm. who many of whom have come out of our program, they gotten their start six or seven years ago, actually playing in the league. So they've come up the ranks. They've come up the ranks and now are actually giving back what they've received which I think is what keeps our family element working and also really kind of conveys to the children that, hey, these people have received something good and now they want to give that back. Mm -hmm. And they're some of our biggest uh, contributors in that they're, yes, they do like to spend a little bit extra time, uh, if you will, call them gym rats uh, and like to be around <laughs> the gym. But, uh, uh, but as an extension of that, they- But you need those gym rats. It's true, it's true, it's true. And uh, they are some of our biggest uh, help uh, uh, in terms of working with the children because mm -hmm. sometimes a 10-year-old can relate better to someone who's 18 or 19 as opposed to someone who may be a parent or... Well, it or must also be a great way for, you know, a third grader or a fourth grader to take a look at someone who was part of the league and now they're in college and maybe they even got a scholarship as sure. a result of... Uh, oh, we've been very fortunate. We've had a number of uh, uh, three boys in particular and one girl who have received scholarships to college. So I think that's another sure sign that we are doing a good job. And uh, once the children can see that, they say, hey, if I work hard and I, I do the right things, 
I can I probably can do it too. get that, sure. I sure. can do it too. So it's a big encouragement and a big boost for them. That's a that's that's wonderful. That's a big plus. No, oh, it is. It is. We're very happy to have that situation. Well, the group, no doubt, is nonprofit, right? Which must mean, or oftentimes means, that you're usually struggling to find a way to raise funds. Um, What's that situation like for you? It's it's a struggle from the standpoint of only time, uh, and I have to say the no amount of work that, in particular, that I spend making the effort to reach out to the different businesses and the individuals to ask them uh, if they would donate, whether it be money or, or time, what have you. Uh, it is difficult from that standpoint, but I have to say we're very fortunate to have a, a very solid, strong, strong sponsor core of about 25 of the local businesses and even individuals who have been just tremendous in terms of being able to keep our costs down in terms of what we charge to the children. In fact, we have the cheapest uh, in terms of cost. Uh, uh, what we offer to the children in terms of monetary value, uh, it is very inexpensive uh, for what we provide. Uh, high quality at low cost uh, equals big results. So we're, we're very, very happy to have a very generous uh, sponsor core. So then contribut contributing doesn't necessarily lend itself only to something that's financial. I mean, it could be a business who sure. can sponsor an event in some kind of way. They, they can give something, whether it's a service or a product. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I mean, obviously, donations are the most significant and the most useful from the standpoint that we can channel those funds to where we specifically need them. Uh, but the nice aspect is is that whether it be maybe even donating shirts or donating trophies, uh, from that standpoint, even bowling balls, for example, we've had donated. A anything along those lines can help uh, uh, provide the children with an opportunity that they otherwise wouldn't have. So we're appreciative of it. Some of the other special events that you guys have or annual events. Sure. Why, why don't you talk a little bit about that, like the 5K? Oh, well, the 5K run, uh, the That's Get to the one. Point. That's a big one. Right. The, the very appropriately named, we think, Get to the Point uh, 5K run uh, has become an annual event. And much like with the Athletic League itself, it started as just an idea. We said, hey, let's uh, perhaps get a road race. Uh, involved uh, somewhere around Greenpoint and now uh, it has become an annual event where uh, over 500 people uh, are involved in actually participating whether it be through running or even volunteering. Uh, to give you an idea and a nice part about the event is we, uh, much as I stressed before, we're more of a family. We try to convey that element now not just from St. Stan's but to all of Greenpoint as well. So we open that up and registration takes place uh, throughout a, a two-month period uh, where uh, the children and their parents can get involved. So the younger children can participate in the dashes, which are one component of the event, uh, where 25, 50, and 75-yard dashes mm -hmm. for 12 and under, both boys and girls, again, we're not forgetting the always, girls. Always. Not forgetting them. Uh, and then uh, from 13 on up, we have the three mile, the 5K mm -hmm. race, which starts right by St. Stan's in the front of St. Stan's and makes its way all around Greenpoint so people can get a perspective of how uh, unique a neighborhood that we do have. Uh, they get to run around the whole neighborhood. And then afterwards, we have a huge party where we just uh, give away all the food and refreshments that we can. And it, it really has turned into a nice feel-good type of affair where uh, a lot of times you don't have the opportunity to express yourselves along those lines, but uh, we mm -hmm. put our best foot forward and say, hey, Greenpoint, St. Stan's, we have something to offer. Let's take advantage of it and make it work. So it's become a terrific event. Definitely. And of course, everyone is invited to the party. Everybody. In fact, uh, that is the big, uh, the big item. Of course, obviously, we have all the food and refreshments uh, included in the uh, registration course. So uh, we normally get about 300 to 350 people uh, just kind of swinging away. We have DJ entertainment and I tell you, I, uh, a little band there. So it's a lot of fun. It's a really good party, and um, the people will turn out. And no it's doubt. true. It's true. So that's, that's getting bigger and better, and we're hopeful that as each year goes on that uh, we'll continue and maybe one day even hit a thousand runners which is what we're hoping and become possibly the one of the premier uh, road races in all of Brooklyn if Why we not? can so that's our goal that's Why our not? goal from that perspective but to maintain that fun element and get the whole family involved not just one particular aspect mm -hmm. we want to get everybody involved 
Any of you out there who might like a little bit more information on the same Stan's Athletic League, you are more than welcome to get in touch with Mr. Frank Carbone, care of the St. Stan's Athletic League, 607 Humboldt Street, that's Brooklyn, New York, 11222. Frank, thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you really very much, Really appreciate Trina. it. Thank Continued you. success. You know, we, we hope good things for you. We wish good things for you. Thank you. Thank you. Every day, we take steps to keep the people we love safe, but some health risks are easy to miss. Ticks hiding in the yard can spread germs, like the ones that cause Lyme disease. Mice searching for food can spread bacteria that makes us sick. Mosquitoes lay eggs in standing water and can spread West Nile virus and more. Cockroaches are drawn to water in the home, leaving behind allergens that can trigger asthma attacks. Common pests can threaten our health. Learn how to protect your family at pestworld.org. It seems the G-Train dilemma hasn't dissipated, nor have the questions surrounding the tunnel which terminates service at Court Square in Long Island City. To fill you in on what's been happening, here's Rena Marie with an update. Almost 100 years old and undergoing its first major overhaul in decades, the New York City subway system is planning a strong comeback with an ambitious program of renovation and expansion. It will culminate in the projected opening of the 63rd Street Crosstown Line in 1989. Planning has already begun on the expanded 23rd Street Eli Avenue Station, which will connect with the 63rd Street Line at the site of the new City Corps building. This is a spearhead project intended to lead the exodus of white-collar businesses from Manhattan into the outer boroughs. But one of the areas of concern for the neighboring community of Greenpoint is G-Train service from Brooklyn. This line carries several thousand passengers a day into Queens and transfer points to Manhattan. But under the new system, the G will cease its local Queens run at the Court Square station in Long Island City. Passengers would then be required to walk through a 350-foot tunnel to the new Eli Avenue station to transfer to the 63rd Street line. This project is part of a plan to lure businesses away from Manhattan and link the 63rd Street line to an operable station but it has also brought with it a substantial amount of controversy. I'm standing at the Court Square train station in Long Island City. Behind me is the site of the new 42-story City Corps building. It's also the site of a 350-foot tunnel which will link the complex with this station right here at Court Square. But the construction of that tunnel and its implications have aroused quite a bit of concern in Greenpoint. The community's Republican district leader, Dr. Leon Nadrowski, voiced his constituents' concerns over the question of tunnel safety. When you build a tunnel between Court Square Station and 23rd Street Eli Avenue Station, you have, let's say, 350 feet in length and about, I don't even know what the exact width is, mm -hmm. but I'd say it'd be about 25, 30 feet. It's a narrow uh, kind of a tunnel and today with the crime crisis at its peak in the city and the concern of going in subways, the fact of having a tunnel built that people have to use, besides the inconvenience, they call, our community uh, has called it a uh, tunnel of doom, they call it a muggish tunnel. They're fearful, they're even concerned about just going in the subway itself, let alone just going through a tunnel. So we feel, uh, any kind of tunnel being built and they say there's going to be security. So perhaps maybe the toll booth uh, uh, gentleman or lady will be uh, watching. That means nothing. And to have a policeman down there constantly probably wouldn't occur anyway. Mm -hmm. And so they're concerned. The community is extremely concerned. MTA spokesperson Bob Previti, on the other hand, says the tunnel's architecture addresses the issue of security and safety. Greenpoint will be able to try out the tunnel long before uh, any service would be possibly cut off at Court Square. Uh, trains will continue to go into Continental um, well into the 1990s, and this passageway should probably open sometime in 89 or 1990. You'll be able to try out the car, you'll be able to see firsthand for yourself if the safety is going to be any kind of a problem. We're installing um, closed circuit TV and the token booth and the whole design of the passageway it is such that it takes into account uh, the modern ways of designing corridors so that you don't uh, put in a hidden corner for criminals to, to hide. 
In fact, it's even in the daytime going to be open to open air light, sunshine coming into the passageway. Uh, the token booth is located directly in the center. There are no hidden corridors or passageways like in Times Square. So to compare it to Times Square is just completely unfair. The best comparison probably would be something along the lines of Rockefeller Center. And even there, it's a more direct sight line from Court Square directly to Eli Avenue. The second issue at hand is the question of ending G service right here at Court Square. And at least one Greenpoint resident has expressed his outrage at the proposed change and inevitable inconveniences. Now this young man who said that if he has to go to work, he gets off at Court Square in the morning during the rush hour, goes through the tunnel if, it, if it's forced upon him, then he gets off at, gets up at Eli to get to New York. And then he has to wait for the car from Queens Plaza, the E and F line. And there's, with the rush and there's a crunch already at Queens Plaza, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a problem to even get on the line at Eli. It's too much traffic going through Queens Plaza area to have the GG also terminated at Queens Plaza. By cutting it back to Court Square, passengers will be able to transfer to the E and the F, and there'll be one stop from Manhattan. The basic flow will be eased at Queens Plaza because there'll be two tunnels into Manhattan instead of, instead of one, so passengers will find it less congested to get on at Eli Avenue. The ultimate consequences of City Corps' new building and the linking of MTA's 350-foot tunnel via this station remains to be seen. Now, the MTA spokesperson has said that ultimately Greenpoint and its residents will have the final say regarding the fate of this tunnel. But on the other hand, the community's Republican district leader has asserted that once this tunnel is built, the community will have no say in the matter. From Long Island City, I'm Rena Marie. Not again. Dad, what are they doing? They're taking care of the roads, hon. Bridges too? Yep. Even the sidewalks you take to school. They really keep this city moving. They're great, Dad. Yeah, they really are. That's it for this edition of Neighborhoods Today. Please join us again, and we'll see you next time.